and we are on the run like a son of a gun. I am not wearing a watch today. I'm going to pick up a watch in what has got to be one of the little more crazier efforts. Uh, I've got my camera rig because I have to record me going into my mailbox store to pick up the DHL package to record myself getting it, opening it, opening it, and validating the contents. Oh, D, you're a nut. So, D, why y'all wilding out on this? Well, I'm gonna go pick up my new girl, Pam. Pam triple zero five to the deuce. That's what's up. Late 1990s, early aughts. 40 millimeters chronograph titanium more or less half titanium half steel El Primera movement expedition expedition <laughs> exhibition I'm going on an expedition so jazz I haven't even had any coffee uh, exhibition case back and they only made 500 of these 350 I think 350 with the tacky bezel and the other 150 have a smooth bezel which arguably looks more beautiful but doesn't make any sense it's a chronograph you need a bezel you need a tacky scale rather so got it off chrono 24 for less than i wanted to pay which is awesome as always no box no papers pure naked but then the seller writes me and then sends me like some video proof of the Sierra number and video proof of how he's going to security tape the box. Because according to him, last time he shipped something to the U.S., uh, DHL opened the package and changed the watch. Uh, all right. Thank you for putting me on high alert that either DHL is going to pilfer my goods, like FedEx did, or that you're gonna put a swatch in here and I paid X amount of dollars for a swatch and there's no pan or eye waiting for me at the pickup today. So what else can I do? Uh, I'm bringing my rig, I've already arranged with my store to uh, you know, allow me to shoot in there. And it's like, what the heck, man? Dang, crazy. Which brings up another interesting point advice point safety point if you're buying you know goods and having it shipped to a UPS store mailboxes etc postal store whatever the shippers coverage or shippers insurance ends it's cut off once the signator person signing for it at the store signs that is the line in the sand that's when the goods are accepted not when you go to the store and pick it up from them and sign their little store note found that out from another recent purchase some some seller was FedExing to me gosh what was that for I don't remember it was a while back anyway they FedExed it to me and they would not FedEx it to my mailbox store because of this very reason. So they they FedExed it to a local FedEx store hold for pickup, which come to think of it is a far better way to do it, uh, hold for pickup. And if I had my druthers, if I had my way, that's what I would have done for this one. Uh, Gosh, it's just I think the seller is the one who kicked it off. But I bought this just the I bought this. Well, hmm, I bought it last week. He didn't want to ship until Monday so that it wouldn't be in transit over the weekend, which some sellers have done that before. That was normal. And then he shipped Monday. It's Wednesday. I was expecting to get it yesterday. I mean, I mean, I mean tomorrow, Thursday. But I paid my customs yesterday, and it's showing up today. So. Usually when sellers are super communicative, sharing videos and stuff, that gives rise to trust. I'm not saying it's inherently that, 
but it makes me feel a little better, but also a little bit worse because he felt the need to tell me about his last experience shipping to the U.S. But I am super jazzed to get this watch. I've been hunting it for a couple weeks. Lone Wolf McQuaid, I am calling you out, bro. Number one, you got great Instagram content. Number two, I would not even known about this watch if it was not for you, bro. I'm just teasing. I love chatting watches with you, dude. Uh, and he turned me on to a different girl, a different Pam, Pam Triple Zero Seven Two, which is where this little misadventure started with. Similar model, and I'm going to break this down in the studio, but similar model, uh, a little bit thicker. Like the 72 is 15 and a half thick. This one is 14. Dude, exhibition case back, El Primero movement, 14 millimeters thick, or I should say thin. Awesome. But the 72 is thicker. Uh, they made, a, I think, 1,500 of those. And I, I went on the hunt for that. But then that hunt for that led me to the knowledge that there's this other one that is, for me, just better. And the funny thing about this watch is the the effort that Pan or I went into the, let's say the collaboration, the collaboration of the steel and titanium, the alternating aesthetic, not just the metal itself, but, because you know titanium's got that gunmetal gray look we love so much. Ooh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Uh, I almost got into a wreck. I'm too hype, ready to calm down and focus on my driving. But is the alternating way. Now, it's first seen in the bracelet, alternating links, and they discontinued this bracelet as well because I guess it was so expensive and difficult to make. Uh, but going up from the case, the case is titanium, the bezel is steel, and then going on to the dial surface, the main dial, it's reverse panda, roughly. The subdials are lighter in color and the dial is the dark gray. Whereas in the 72, it's, it's black dial. So they put a lot of effort into blending those two metals. And I've never seen steel and titanium used in the same watch in this way. At first I was like, oh, that's pretty goony. But the more you, <laughs> the more you look at it, the more you start to love it. All right, I'm going to focus on the road. I'm going to pick it up after I've got the watch on wrist. Ball bam on the Pam. A ball bam on the Pam. Much ado about nothing. I don't know why that seller made such a big deal about... Well, maybe he's just trying to make sure I took the proper care when I unboxed it on my end. But she come in, gorgeous, gorgeous. I never thought in a million years I would own and operate a Panerai. Respect them immensely, of course, for their history. But they were always just too big seeming for me. Like it would never fit me. But the Panerais that have these El Primero movements, they're not 44, they're 40 millimeters. All right, let's hit the studio and get up in his business, shall we? Well, 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 what do we have here? A watch and a brand I never knew I would own and love and frankly, absolutely adore. All right, let's put some numbers up on the board before we get into this other beautiful book uh, for Pam Hunters. What are we looking at here? This has uh, got an El Primero chronograph movement. It's the Z400, uh, no date. It's the same movement that went into the Rolex Daytonas from the period, looking at late 90s, early aughts. And uh, even though they descaled that to 28,000 beats, this is at 36,000. So we got a super duper smooth sweep on that second hand. And uh, gosh, the El Primero based uh, uh, Panerai, they're 40 millimeters which you will see wears awesome on my six and a half inch wrist in just a moment. But dang, 40 millimeters. We got 47 for the lug to lug. 14 millimeters thin. Makes me wonder why the date model is like 15.5. They are both 200 meters water resistant. Got this lockdown clasp and we're gonna show the pusher actions in just a moment. 22 across. 
which is okay, better than 21. I don't know that they could have gone to 20 for this. It would have been a little bit, I don't know, maybe too tiny, too weird. And this is a mix of titanium and steel alternating. You can see the coloration of the flanks versus that, basically that Y shape. And that's carried through to the case design. The case is titanium. The bezel is steel. Sapphire on both sides. Look at that gorgeous movement. 200 meters water resistance. It is a proper Panerai dive watch. And in this case, a chronograph, which I found somewhat curious. These are the pushers. Let me get some focus in here. These are the pushers. So you take the lever down, start the chrono, and then if you are going to time your dive, you would close this because these pushers cannot be actuated unless this lever is open, which makes sense. If you're going to be using a chronograph in a dive situation, gosh, you're using a digital or a dive computer, but you know, in terms of form and function here, you would close this up, go on your dive. These can't be pushed, so no ingress of water while you're underwater. Come up from your dive, shake off the water, Boom and boom. As I said previously, I got this one naked out of Japan at an awesome price. Uh, Chrono24 sourced this. Really great seller. A seller who was like, actually his concern about the shipment made me concerned about the shipment. <laughs> he was so detailed and so forth about security tape and how sometimes stuff goes missing in DHL. And that's definitely, that definitely happens with FedEx. Absolutely happens with FedEx. But turns out he's just a very caring seller. He was looking after me, and that was, that was very sweet of him, very kind of him. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, let's get it on wrist here and see what she's doing. It's got that double deployant butterfly clasp. I was just singing like a song. Long lead. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I went to my local AD to see about getting a clasp so I could put this on some leather. The titanium clasps are expensive, Panerai. What are you thinking? Let's jump into this book. Full disclosure, I went and I hunted this uh, without having this, which is okay. I had my buddy to lead me a little bit on with uh, the models and so forth. And you know I love a good hunt. But if you're interested in Panerai, particularly used Panerai, we know that you need to be careful because for a certain number of years, I can't remember the, the span, uh, they weren't decorating their movements and their watches were very easily knocked off and you really couldn't tell the difference between a fake and a real one. So got this book out of Japan, which means most of it is gonna be in kanji, but we got fabulous pictures, all of the PAM numbers going from 97 to 2013. And we've got some of the deeds as well. So let's just jump into this book review. First of all, it's an inch thick. This book is going to run you, gosh, landed somewhere around 130 bucks, which is a lot for a book. If you're not a Panerisi, this book probably isn't for you. If you're not hunting Panerai, it may not, it's probably also not for you. But if you want to get a full sense of all the models for a certain period, I can't imagine a better version of a book than this. So let's, uh, let's do some thumbing, shall we? And what you're going to see is one side and the other, one model after the other, a bunch of details I can't read at the bottom. But when we get to this one, I'll zoom up in there. But gosh. This is a lot. There's a lot of models in here. I didn't count up how many. Oh, that's interesting. Is that a wall clock? Oh. But, oh, strap, leathers. Awesome. I think we're coming up on 72. Oh, I misspoke earlier. Oh, no, it's 172. My bad. My B. Come on. Where are we at, man? All right, coming up on... Oh, that's a cool one. Check that out. With the actual Italian frogman on a uh, hunter's case style protector. All right, Pam 72. This is the one I originally started hunting. Uh, let's see what specs are there. 
year 2000, 40 millimeters, 200 meters water resistance, and I can't read the rest. So those are the, the deets you'll get in here, which, you know what, all that really matters is this reference number, those basic pieces of information, because if you're gonna go Panerai, you're gonna wanna know what the water resistance what the water resistance is because not all their watches have 200 meters. Oh, I think we have up here at the top. Oh, all right, perfect. Let's just double check. 40 millimeters at the top, perfect. That way you'll know if you're looking at one of the Gigantor ones or one that will fit your particular wrist. There we are. PAM 52, oh, from 1999, 40 mils, 200 meters, now, I happen to know that this is limited to 500 units, so that's probably what that stands for. They made 350 like this with the tacky bezel, and then they made 150 that were smooth bezel, which doesn't make sense to me personally, although I will admit, in fact, let's, let's pop up a picture right over here, editorial staff. I will admit it's a more beautiful watch, it's cleaner, and no, I don't use the tacky scale, but if I've got a chronograph, I want to be able to use the tacky scale. It is absolutely cleaner and more beautiful than this one, but dang, uh, less functional. So who's this watch for? These are, these are very rare, and so they're going for way more than what they originally listed at retail. But if you admire it, get one. Uh, they're probably all going to be coming out of Japan at this point. But as I said in the other part of the video, don't be afraid to get one naked. Skip the box and papers, get a better price on it, and you'll love it. My wrist, 6.5. So basically, if you're at, I don't know if a, some of six and a quarter could necessarily pull it off because I'm just on the verge of not. So with these 40 millimeter El Primero ones, let's call this a six and a half and up. I have to say, some of the newer Panerais, uh, I think are in 38. Oh, they fit me, they're time only, they fit me very, very well. Uh, but I couldn't be happier uh, with this purchase. This is my Panerai, I'm never letting it go, God willing. And because of that mix of titanium and steel, it's not as absolutely light as you would expect for, you know, a, a total, I was gonna say pure, a solely titanium watch. We're coming in at 146 grams, which is not bad and it doesn't wear heavy for me. And don't forget, they, they stopped making this bracelet, which, you know, on one hand is cool because it makes it more desirable. On the other hand, it makes it rare. And uh, I didn't need to add a link. I had to take a link out. Uh, so double check. Anytime you're buying from the JDM, double check the size for two reasons. Number one, the Japanese market, their, their wrists tend to run smaller. So watches tend to be fitted and sometimes bracelet links don't attend the watch sale and other times sellers experienced sellers they pull the links and sell them separately on ebay madness i understand it i don't agree with it um i like to keep a watch all together as much as is practical and as possible wherever and whenever i can so this has been your review of the pam 52. There you have it, Hobby of Ours is in the Panerai Mob, the Paneristis, the Paneristo, the Pamer, uh, what am I now? <laughs> I'm a nut, that's what. All right, hope you enjoyed this little segment, this little trip, this little Panerai love fest. And I hope wherever you are in this wonderful, beautiful Hobby of Ours that you are blessed. All right, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.